Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Uh, I am Jamaluddin Mahmud and I'm going to cover our module uh, entitled Research Ethics and Safety. Uh, this is the presentation outline, which uh, the first of all, I will cover warm up and about myself. And then the main topics are research ethics, publication ethics, research ethics approval, lab safety and plagiarism. Now, before we start, I would like to share that uh, this is a very interesting figures where I said that the first one, uh, if you look here, what it means just that uh, some of the points man, might not be agreed by all. So here, when you listen to this talk, we need to agree to disagree. And when we say belapang dada, eh, because sometimes uh, things are true, but we see it from a different angle. Now, this is about myself. Uh, I'm from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and my research interest is about biomechanics, uh, and instrumental mechanics, phenomenon analysis and motion capture. Now, this is my PhD journey, which I want to say that it is not impossible for all of us to graduate on time if you work systematically and work hard enough. Now, before that, in order for you to graduate your PhD, the most important thing is that you need to know what is the philosophy of PhD. And if you look here, uh, the first one is the effort will be focused on writing a dissertation. So the keyword is dissertation, significant contribution, discovery of new knowledge, development of a new theory and significant publications. So this one I took from the University of Cambridge. So this is a uh, international standard of uh, the philosophy of UICD. So for UITM students, uh, I would like to advise you for you to understand what are the requirements in order for you to obtain your PhD or a master's degree. Other than that, the requirement for PhD is if you look down there is talking about the novel findings and discuss critically and the meaning of novel it's actually original, inventive, innovative, fresh, unfamiliar, and new fangal. Now we talk about novelty. According to a professor, uh, I would like to share, I like his idea when he said that the level of, the, we have three levels of novelty. The first one is new theory, or you develop new equation or new model. Now the second level of novelty is about you developing new methods, new algorithm, new tools, new product approaches and so on and the lowest level of novelty is you furnish new data to accept or reject existing theory but for PhD if you just come up with new data it would not be quite significant of the novelty and thus it's, it's quite uh, difficult for you to defend your viva so if you can aim for the first or the second level of novelty that would be good Now, let's start with the ethics in doing research. Now, this is the definition uh, which I took from the Cambridge University. Uh, in general, uh, I always emphasize on the fundamentals of knowledge. So, if you look here, uh, these are the definition. Ethics, a system of accepted belief that control behavior, especially such a system based on morals. And according to Cambridge University, the, the meaning of integrity means honesty and the ability to do or know what is morally right. And for safety, uh, it is a state in which or a place where you are safe and not in danger or at risk. And if you look at the third one, safety. Now, we can relate to our situation now. This is more safe if we conduct this course module by just doing it online. Now, research integrity. This, I took it from the Shawdi and Satalka, uh, which is interpreted as research integrity. Uh, means uh, honesty, transparency and objectivity. Uh, basically, it stress the importance of sticking to the research question and avoiding bias in data interpretation. 
and the core of research and publication ethics. So research integrity and research ethics is very important, especially when we are doing our uh, PhD or master's research. Uh, researchers should adhere to the principle of research integrity to avoid any misconduct or corruption. Now, more importantly, if you look here, the other topics is about ethics in publications. Do you know what are the ethics related to publications? Now, these are the main issues related to publication ethics, which are the top two is actually the plagiarism. So, plagiarism is a main issue uh, in publications. And then there's also issues related to research fraud. Okay, which means uh, some people they are not giving correct data or do fraud in doing research other than that in publications is also related to conflict of interest uh, salami slicing uh, duplicate or redundant publication and one of the other common things is about authorship so do you have anything and what else what else do you think so if you have any idea you may write it down Now, we have uh, a few uh, bodies which uh, come up with a publishing ethics guideline. Uh, these are some of the, a few of the important, uh, uh, one of the uh, famous uh, bodies which are, we can look the publishing ethics guideline published by Springer Nature. Uh, and then they have the copy, yeah, which is a copy committee on publishing ethics. And for Wiley, we have the uh, Wiley published best practice guidelines on publishing ethics. So uh, this is available. These are available online. You can look for that. But the one that I like to elaborate more for this module is actually comes from Elsevier or Scopus. Uh, where if you look at the website of Elsevier, they publish a publishing ethics guideline which you can find from the uh, website, eh? the link to the website as I showed you and you can look at there. So according, uh, if you look at the website, they emphasize on four main uh, duties related to the duties the first one is duties of the publisher so the publishing ethics also related to the duties of editor duties of reviewers and duties of authors uh, in this class I'm going to focus more on the duties of the authors so as stated in that website the duties of authors uh, the reporting standards eh, it should be of high quality that means uh, the paper should be up to the standard and then uh, the other points are to make sure the originality of the sources and also acknowledge of sources the third one uh, related to multiple redundant or concurrent publish publication uh, the next one the author to ensure the confidentiality of uh, the work uh, the, it is the duties of the authors also to ensure the authorship of the paper hazards and human or animal subjects uh, declaration of competing interests notification of fundamental errors and image unity so in the, in the next slides we will elaborate more on each topics so the first one, if you look at the criteria for authorship, eh, according to the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors, uh, it is recommended that authorship should be based on the following four criteria. Eh? Should be four criteria. The first one is that substantial contributions. So the authors should have substantial contributions. Uh, number two. Uh, the drafting the work or revising it critically for important intellectual content and third uh, the author should give the final approval 
of the ver version to be published and finally the fourth one is accountable for all aspects that means all the authors should be accountable for all aspects now if i repeat again the four criteria means the first one substantial contribution uh, number two critically for important intellectual content yeah. and then the third one final approval and the fourth one the author should be accountable for all aspects now all those designated as authors should meet all four criteria for authorship and all who meet the four criteria should be identified as authors those who do not meet all four criteria should be acknowledged now the other thing also one of the issue is actually the ghostwriting so what is ghostwriting ghost ghostwriter sometimes it means that a person uh, whose work is actually writing papers or writing a manuscript and then uh, the manuscript that he wrote will be uh, put somebody else name there so ghost writing or ghost authorship also uh, is considered as not ethical now uh, some of the journals they are uh, specific look uh, quite specific on this where for example okay uh, they required us for the, each authors to uh, label the contribution of each authors so if you look here for example uh, this is the journal uh, entitled archive of budo uh, for the name of the authors if you can look uh, on the slides here uh, besides the name of the author they have uh, the contrib uh, author's contribution which means uh, a is referring to the study design b data collection c statistical analysis d manuscript preparation and e funds collection this is one example of the journal which asks us to clearly define the contribution of each authors uh, some other journals also have like this but maybe they they put it in a in a different way now this just actually the notes the elaboration of the uh, 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 issues related to plagiarism for example uh, reporting standards uh, this is from the Elsevier uh, if you look here it means that authors of reports of original research should present an accurate account of the work performed as well as an objective discussion of its significance it means that uh, the standard of reporting in this case uh, should be of high quality it means uh, if you want to publish a paper the paper must be of certain standards now if we look here okay the other issues uh, the other points is that the authors should ensure that they have written entirely original work so that's the word that we want to emphasize the authors should ensure that they have written entirely original work uh, and if the authors have used the work and or words of others that this has been appropriately cited means uh, whatever past you can cite here to me and proper acknowledgement of the work of others must always be given now if you look here the important thing to 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 stress here so that plagiarism takes many forms from passing off another's paper as the author's own paper to copying or paraphrasing substantial part of another's paper without attribution to claiming results from research conducted by others in general i like the statement is saying that plagiarism in all its forms constitute unethical behavior and is unacceptable so i will uh, repeat this again this is a very important sentence saying that plagiarism in all its forms constitutes unethical behavior and is unacceptable so it means that plagiarism is not ethical and should not be acceptable now the other thing also is that uh, we should ensure uh, that the paper or the manuscript that we intend to publish uh, is not 
being sent to multiple journals. Eh? Submitting the same manuscript to more than one journal concurrently constitutes unethical behavior and is unacceptable. So, I repeat, submitting the same manuscript to more than one journal concurrently constitutes unethical behavior and is unacceptable. It simply means that at one time, you should not send the manuscript to more than one journal. Confidentiality. So, the information obtained in the course of confidential services, such as referring manuscript or grant application, must not be used without the explicit written permission of the author of the work involved in these services. Or, in short, say that whatever information or data uh, related to the uh, publication and uh, which is uh, if, if should be confidential right? should be confidential now authorship of the paper okay uh, authorship should be limited to those who have made a significant contribution to the conception design execution or interpretation of the reported body or if we can look it before as the slides as I presented earlier uh, in short that we have the four criteria so if the authors fulfill the four criteria then he can put as the authors uh, in name in the authors otherwise if he, the, he or she uh, did not fulfill all the four criteria they can put it as acknowledgement now some work uh, related to human or animal subjects and also uh, some of the research work are hazards so if the work involves chemicals procedures or equipment that have any unusual hazards uh, the author must clearly identify this in the manuscript so if you're doing something hazardous or your work related to human or animal subjects then the author must clearly identify this in the manuscript so usually okay you Usually, uh, there's a statement in the manuscript. Uh, for example, if the work involves the use of animal or human subjects, uh, the author should ensure that the manuscript contains a statement that all procedures were performed in compliance with the relevant laws and institutional guidelines that are appropriate institutional committee that have been approved them. It means that if you look some of the papers in some journals where involved uh, human subjects, uh, there's a sentence saying that the research work have been uh, approved by the research ethics committee of maybe from the university. And then uh, the, in that paper, this kind of work, a statement uh, in the manuscript stating that informed consent was obtained for experimentation with human subject must also be written okay if you uh, if you're doing research uh, related to animal or human subjects uh, you can look at those papers uh, related papers published in the journal and then you can see they have uh, this guideline okay for human subject the author should ensure that the work described has been carried out in accordance with the code of ethics of the World Medical Association uh, for experiments involving humans. Now, not only humans, if uh, you are dealing with uh, animal subject, uh, right? all animal experiments should comply with the ARRIVE guidelines and should be carried out in accordance with the UK animal scientific procedures. So later on, uh, I will describe uh, the uh, the procedure of how to apply for the uh, research approval approval from the research uh, ethics committee from UITM and also we have another one if uh, for research uh, ethics for work related to animals now the other point is also that you have to declare of competing interest 
uh, WAME define conflict of interest as a divergence between an individual's private interest, competing interest, uh, and then if uh, what is needed here is actually all authors should disclose in their manuscript any financial and personal relationship with other people or organization. That means uh, we have to declare uh, the competing interests uh, when we are submitting the articles. Notification of fundamental error. If suddenly the authors discover a significant error, or inaccuracy in their work, published work. Yeah. It is the author's obligation to promptly notify the general auditor or publisher. Okay, you can imagine that uh, if your paper uh, accidentally publish a wrong graph or wrong data, and the the one important point of publishing a paper is that for people to replicate our work, okay, we will be we will feel sorry for the new researchers who try to replicate the work because uh, if the data is uh, wrong that means uh, they can never get the same answer with your work so it is uh, the duty of the authors to uh, notify the general editor or publisher right Okay, image integrity. Okay, one point that I want to highlight from this slide is that manipulating images for improved quality is accepted, but manipulation for other purposes could be seen as scientific ethical abuse, and we will we'll be dealt with accordingly. It means that okay, unless you want to improve the image for clarity, so if you manipulate. Uh, manipulation of image is considered as unethical. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we in this session we going to look at uh, some of the points related to ethics approval. Now, before we start, if you look here, why not you try to answer this? These are some of the questions. So, I give you two minutes to look into these questions and try to answer whether the statement number one until number ten, true or false. So, for example, UITM Research Ethics Committee and UITM Committee on Animal Research and Ethics Care are the same committee. Is it true or false? So, let me leave you about one minute for you to have a look then and try to answer these questions. Well, actually, the, during the face-to-face -face session, for those who answered this all correctly, I'll give some token. Okay, you have enough time? Okay. So these are the questions uh, that you answer first. And then uh, now we're going to look at the points here. I'm going to share with you. Uh, some of the, of the points or issues related to ethics approval. Now, if you go to the UITM website, okay, there's uh, one website website from this uh, image, which you will find the research ethics committee. So this is the website. Okay, uh, you look here. If you are dealing with a uh, human subjects okay and uh, in order for you to apply the ethics approval okay this is the website that you should visit right and from this website okay if you go to the downloads 
these are the forms available eh, for you to download which is the application form number one number two ethical issues questionnaire number three subject information sheets and consent form number four checklist for applicants and number five REC flow chart now what I want to focus here is that this the form Borang REC 1E 2006 is part E uh, this is the ethical issues questionnaire so in general if you are doing research related to human subject you need to put this information and later on there are a few questions that you should answer so for example the first one is uh, related to the subject's profile for example uh, question number one you have to indicate please indicate your sample size and age groups number two are any of the subjects from a particular vulnerable group so vulnerable group means uh, young children uh, mentally challenged uh, elderly okay? uh, so now number third one are any of these subjects from a minor minority or culturally identified or disadvantaged group so in general if uh, the answer is no then in general you can say that uh, related to the subjects uh, the 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 research is uh, is I would consider under minimal risk now there's also questions about risk of harm for example will you be collecting biological samples example body fluids what type of bi biological samples so if again yeah, you have to answer whether it's no or yes and you can put the description there and from the point of the reviewer once you submit all the forms just now okay and then uh, the the forms will be given uh, to one uh, identified reviewer and these are uh, in, in general at, at present this these are uh, the report that the reviewer have to to write eh, after they reviewed your proposal okay for example section a research methods summary whether it's uh, interviews questionnaires observation uh, secondary data analysis uh, maximal exercise intensity or ingestion or tasting now the part b section b is related to the subjects is it children or is it vulnerable groups athletes trained person and other than that the form itself is it the form complete so if the form complete they have the background objective everything results then the reviewer will put yes eh, to that section now finally the reviewer will have to come up with uh, a verdict or you say a recommendation so it's saying that I have reviewed the application and proposed as below so the first one if it's from uh, the forms and from yeah from the forms if the reviewer sits that uh, the research uh, is not risky okay then they will put uh, or they recommend that research is a minimal risk research okay and then if there's something that have been to amended uh, in the proposal then the second recommendation would be minimal risk research recommended to approve with changes and if it's found that the research is not of minimal risk, 
Okay. For example, if you have to take blood and then the reviewer will recommend more than minimal risk and if the work is uh, recommended for more than minimal risk, then the researchers uh, have to defend their proposal in the research ethics committee meeting, which is uh, organized uh, every month once. So they will organize it, uh, they will come for the presentation. If the research is recommended as minimal risk research, and without changes, then uh, the REC, REC uh, members, the meeting will approve the work and the researchers can carry out the work uh, without having a uh, need to present the work. Okay? They can start the research uh, as soon as they got the approval letter from the REC. Now, apart from that, there's another committee which is uh, looking at research related to animal subjects. Eh? Animal subjects. So, this is uh, a different committee and head by a, a different person, the chairperson. Now, this is a different one. They look only at the uh, animal research uh, research related to animal and this committee is called as Committee on Animal Research and Ethics C-A-R-E Now apart from they have to put the titles and the name okay, you have to give some information for example the details of the animals and then number 11 you have to explain procedures to be carried out on the animals and number 11, so you have to justify uh, justification, justification of animal use in the research. Explain why animal usage is necessary. So usually, uh, for example, if you want to conduct tests on live uh, lab rats, or sometimes uh, they test it on rabbits. So if you want to conduct uh, if you deal with animal subjects, live animal subject, then you have to get to fill up this form and send it to the CARE and then you need to get approval from them. Okay, now let's go back to the questions. Question number one. Question number two. Question number three. Okay. Question number four is, uh, is referring to retrospective study. For those who, who, of you who do not know, re retrospective study means that uh, we use the data. For example, uh, those researchers from the medical faculty or from the dental faculty, they will use the data, the patient record data. So they, from the record patient data, they will analyze and they will come up with the new findings. So that is generally called as the retrospective study. Okay, and then we have uh, research involving children below of eighteen as subjects. Interview, okay, in even interview and questionnaire, actually we need to apply uh, approval from the research ethics committee from UITM. Okay? I repeat, even interview. Or questionnaire, okay, work related to questionnaire interview. We need to get first. We need to get the approval from the research ethics committee. Now, are you ready for the answer? These are the answer, All right? So, as I mentioned earlier, okay, REC and CARE uh, not the same committee. And then for questionnaire, even though you do questionnaire, you need to get approval from the UITM REC. Uh, children below 18 years of age are considered as vulnerable subjects. Therefore, if you deal with children 
uh, below 18 years old, uh, usually uh, you have to present your work at the REC meeting. Uh, retrospective study which retrieving medical data from hospital just need approval from the specific hospital and not from REC. No, actually you need the approval both from UITM REC and also from the hospital. So research involving children of below 18 years as subjects uh, are not considered as minimal risk research. Interviewing healthy subjects, you need to get approval from UITM REC. Okay. Sample size calculation is an important element in the proposal submitted to UITM REC. Okay, the way you need you need to find information on how to calculate the accurate sample size. Okay, UITM REC meeting, as I mentioned earlier, is conducted every month, not every two months. Now, URTM REC members include one at least one lay person. Lay person means which is not researchers, which is ordinary people. They might not understand the scientific work of it, but they can consider the ethical uh, issue of the research. Uh, and when you preparing your research proposal, it is very important to include the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. For more information, uh, you can uh, contact REC UITM from the website and get more information from them. Okay, now let's go to uh, another section of this topic which is we talk about uh, lab safety. If you look at the top right, right, uh, very interesting. Eh? Forget lab safety. I want superpowers. Eh? <laughs> so this is something like if, uh, for example, like Spider-Man. Eh? He's been beaten by spider and then he become Spider-Man. Now, before we start, I would also like to uh, give you some few questions which uh, you try to answer it first even before we learn because we can say that uh, most of the uh, safety issues are actually uh, common sense eh? related to common sense so these are the 10 questions so you look at the statements from 1 until 10 and now you guess whether it is correct or not okay? even before uh, we start uh, the lecture related to it. So I leave you uh, one minute for you to look at these statements and guess whether they are correct or not. Okay, so have you have your answers with you? Now let's go to the notes, which is uh, in general I took the notes eh, from the websites uh, Lab Manager. Okay. So lab safety rules and guidelines. Now, having a strong set of overall laboratory safety rules is essential to avoiding disasters in the lab. Of course, more importantly is that the safety rules are enforced and followed uh, by the user of the lab. Okay. So that is very important. It, it, it's no use if we have a very good 
guidelines or safety rules but we do not adhere to the safety rules what is important is that we want all our phd candidate and masters candidate right uh, be safe while doing their research work eh? uh, if not uh, we, we don't want to see the scenario where when you go to the convocation eh? uh, before you enter your itm start doing your work then you are all healthy and suddenly when you go to the convocation okay uh, you go up to the stage uh, without one fingers or two fingers so that is uh, that is something that we should avoid right so knowing the proper proper laboratory safety signs and symbol is also important right now there are uh, quite a number of general safety rules which I uh, have no intention to read one by one. Uh, it's just that I want to highlight uh, a few which I think uh, is important. Okay. So the most important is that what we should know in the event of an emergency, proper signage, safety equipment, safely using laboratory equipment and basic common sense rules. Right. So if you look here, or maybe you can look I give you a few minutes to look at it now apart from that we have another set if you look here we have an, quite a number the total is basically uh, So if you look here, there's something that never smell or taste chemicals. Sometimes it's a, we are tempted to look at the chemicals. They look so delicious, you know, so like delicious chemicals. The color so tempting, but please never smell or taste chemicals. Okay. Other than that, do not pipe it by mouth. Now, the last statement said that if you notice any unsafe conditions in the lab, let your supervisor know as soon as possible. So take some time to look at these points. Now for the housekeeping safety rules, okay, it's important to for housekeeping. Laboratory housekeeping rules also apply to most facilities and deal with the basic upkeep, tidiness and maintenance of a safe laboratory. Okay, number one is always keep your work area tidy and clean. So that is very important. Always keep your work areas tidy and clean. Make sure that all eye wash stations, emergency showers, fire extinguishers and these are always unoffside and accessible. Okay, you may look at these points. Okay, how about dress code? So make sure you wear the proper dress code. So if you in the doing work in the lab, you may use the lab codes. And if for uh, engineers, if they look working in the in the workshops they must use a, a proper attire okay personal protection when working with equipment hazardous materials glassware or chemical always fa wear face shields or safety glasses and you may read the the other uh, this is an example of personal protection. I took it from this website, Tasawu. Uh, yeah, even it's written there. I took it uh, directly from the website. So I'm not the agent for this website. But this is the kit yeah, for the PPE, which is consists of helmet, 
headphone, goggles, mask, glove, coveralls and shoes. And for those who are doing work uh, in the workshops using uh, machineries. So it's very important for you to protect yourself. Now, some chemical safety rules. The two that I want to highlight is that number nine, Flammable and volatile chemicals should only be used in a film food. And then ensure that all chemical waste is disposed properly. Every chemical should be treated as though it were dangerous. Okay. Okay, we need also to fully aware of the hazards of the materials that you'll be using. Never pour chemicals that have been used back into the stock container. Now, the chemicals should never be mixed, measured or heated in front of your face. If anything happens, if they explode, then it will explode right in front of your face. And that is very dangerous. For electrical safety rules, high voltage equipment should never be changed or modified in any way. Even though you are doing research as uh, in you are a PhD student in electrical, unless you have the authority, okay, then only you can look at it. If not, okay, high voltage equipment should never be changed or modified in any way. Always turn off a high voltage power supply when you are attaching it. And whenever you can avoid using extension cords. Uh, these are the cases where sometimes you can see in the lab there's so many extension of the attention cords and this is quite dangerous. Okay, for lazy safety rules, even if you are certain that a laser beam is eye safe or low power, you should never look into it, wear PPE. And one interesting, the notes is that it said, do not walk through laser beams. So you can imagine if you walk past through a high intensity laser beams, <laughs> then what will happen to you? You will be cut into two. Okay. So these are the questions earlier I imposed. Now let's look at it. Now these are the answers. Okay. Are you ready for the answer? So all are correct except one. Always heat a liquid in a closed container. No, we should heat the liquid in a open container. Okay. Safety science is very important. So, can you guess what is the meaning of this safety science? Are you ready for the answer? Okay. For the first row, we have that. And the for second row, and let's go to the third row. So these are the meaning of the safety signs. Now let's take a few minutes on plagiarism. So before we start, what do you think? Is this statement? Plagiarism or not, we have four cases. This is cases two. Do you think it's plagiarism or not? Third cases. Do you think it's plagiarism or not? And the fourth cases. Do you think this is plagiarism or not? Now later on we'll see answer. Now this is the definition of plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you pass off other people's text as your own. Okay. Or the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them as one of own piracy. Now, there are many types of plagiarism. Some are obvious and some are not. And usually, generally, plagiarism caused because of ignorance. However, the fact will not excuse him or her from the consequences so some people they said that they 
accidentally do plagiarism or they do not aware that they are committing plagiarism. Okay, so according to the University of Pittsburgh, these are the 10 things. Okay? So if you look at these slides, copying text without quotation mark, with no citation. So if you look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all these sentences, you can find same uh, points which is actually without citation. So citations are very important uh, in your manuscript yeah, to show that the word is originally not from you. Okay, the last sentence also, paying someone else to do your work, purchasing material or translating for, from someone else material is con also considered as, uh, this is from this website. Now the highlight, the device defense against plagiarism is knowledge and the practice. So you should know what should be done or should not be done. Okay. The second one, learn how to paraphrase code and to properly cite reference material. A writer will never gain good writing skills if he or she does not create their own work. The first one is to resist the temptation to cheat by plagiarizing. The writer's academic professional and professional reputation is too valuable to lose. So if you are found plagiarism, it will affect your reputation. Now it's always very good to use a plagiarism checker. So this is one way to check for plagiarism. So I found this in the internet. It's called the plagiarism sever severity meter. You can look from the left to right. It starts from even the mild plagiarism up to the left which is identity theft copycat and identity theft is up to that level eh? how serious is it so from this flowchart you can gauge yourself eh? how serious is the plagiarism now quick questions citation program can we rephrase of course not we can never rephrase uh, the sentences from al quran Confirm statement, do we need to cite? No, for example, the earth is a sphere, so no, we do not need to cite because the confirm statement. And you have a case where you, and then you have these reference, references, which is Manan, Mahmud, okay. in, in general, you can only cite whatever materials that you have, you have looked at. So if you have paper, Manan, Mahmud, and Evans, then you can cite all. But if you have only J. Mahmud, then you can only actually cite J. Mahmud only. Okay? So cite, when you cite, make sure you have the source of that, your reference. Okay, what UITM stands about plagiarism and academic dishonesty? So UITM has published a book entitled Plagiarism Academic Honesty. So the penalties, okay, if it is found, you are committing plagiarism, uh, a failed grade for your work. You can be suspended of your academic session. You can be expelled from the university or even if you have got your degree, eh, you can be withdrawal or revocation of your degree. And some few cases is that for master's degrees, he has been get, get a failed grade F and also suspended for two semesters because it's found that the dissertation he uh, presented for his uh, final year project is actually uh, plagiarism, right? plagiarized. So this is the book you can refer yeah, from the UITM website. Now I want to share with you some of the tools similarity check. So these are the example of plagiarism detection tools. We have a lot here. For example, we have Dustball, Authenticate, Viper, Safe Sign. But the one that I want to share is tool because uh, at, mo at the moment UITM is uh, subscribing to Turnitin. So we can use Turnitin. The instructor will create the classes and invite students. This is the website. And then uh, the instructor will create the class and class ID and password submit to the student. And then the instructor will invite students to submit. 
So for example here the student submit if you can here from from the, the page student submit and it will write there the the percentage of similarity okay and usually what you need to do print out the first page with the uh, showing the percentage of the Smith score and then this page will be endorsed by your supervisor Even here, look at the right hand side. Uh, then you can detect from which uh, sources actually yeah, the similarity comes from. Now, let's look back at this question case one, case two, case three, case four. So, are you ready for the answer? Well, if you look at it, actually, in number two. Uh, not only number one, sorry, it's not plagiarism. Because first, what you need to do, you need to rephrase. And the second one, you need to decide. Eh? You need to cite the sources. For number two, okay, so if you cite exactly from the source, then you have to put the code and code mark. Okay. Uh, so number four is rephrase, but they did not cite or they did not put the sources now revision citation references okay which section of paper or chapter should have references so we basically have abstract introduction nature review methodology result discussion conclusion so which section should have references many and what's the purpose so are you ready for the answer yes okay for the abstract usually most abstract, I don't think you need to put the references there. The introduction you might have because you want to to the use is support statement. The most actually is come from the literature review. So you have many references or citation for literature review. So the purpose of the citation in the literature review is actually to critical review and to support research gap. Uh, to support the statement and to present the research gap. Other than that, in the discussion, because the, the references in the discussion, you need to support your findings. In methodology, you can have a few. In the results, it is not advisable to put references because if you put the references, then the reviewer or the reader will confuse whether it's your results or the results comes uh, is actually comes from the sources, references of the citation. Okay, so uh, are we clear? Now, let, I want to share just a few ethics issues, which is the current issue. If you look here from Elsevier, this is uh, quite new. Elsevier retracted 26 papers accepted because of fake reviews. So the reviews are fake. Uh, Elsevier found out that the reviews are fake. Some of them is that they give... Uh, the name of the reviewer, the nominate reviewer, and they gave uh, the the fake uh, email address. And then when they submit to that, actually they are the one who is doing the review themselves. And also, investigate investigate 100 of peer reviewers for monitoring citations. So this is another issue related to, to ethics, whereby the reviewers will ask the uh, authors to cite their papers okay uh, so this is another hot issue and actually this is a, a quite recent issue so as i presented earlier this is the presentation uh, i let me recall we start with the uh, talk about by myself and then the first session is we talk uh, i have presented about the research ethics the definition and then we have come up with the publication ethics, uh, which is related to uh, uh, plagiarism and then also authorship. And then I have uh, explained about the research ethics approval. And I've showed about talk about lead safety. And finally, uh, we have discussed, I have talked about plagiarism. So if you want to contact, uh, this is my uh, email address and contact number. Feel free to contact me. 
and you may google my name with that uh, thank you uh, i hope uh, you enjoy my presentation uh, thank you that's all